If you've been around my channel for a bit now, you definitely see a familiar pattern. I love replayability within games, and a genre that keeps excelling in that department are roguelikes. It feels pretty refreshing to return to some indie games that I've had sitting in my library for a hot minute, and a game that I've had my eye on since last October apparently released recently. The game that you're watching right now is called Deadlink. Deadlink is a cyberpunk themed FPS roguelike that shifts the player into a humanoid combat shell with only one job, destroy anyone who gets in your way. Deadlink manages to take the roguelike elements and uses that to perfect the entire flow of combat. Its adrenaline filled, fast paced gameplay is what kept me so interested for so long. And honestly, I'm so happy to finally sit down and be able to play it with its full release. This year has already been an incredible year for so many different games, and I love the fact that indie titles like this one has a place with the rest of them. So let me break down how this game works. You're a covert operative recruited to the Experimental Deadlink Project. Essentially, you're a pilot controlling a combat shell. And with that shell, we fight through multiple areas all to help take down some of the most powerful corporations the world has ever known. You'll pick a class, expand your skills, and modify weapons to match your playstyle. Deadlink allows you to evolve by constantly upgrading your body with implants, and those implants in turn let you get your hands even dirtier. Deadlink also has a very intriguing cast of NPCs that lend you a hand along the way. Along with the roguelike gameplay elements, fast-paced combat, and arcade-like movement, Deadlink aims to satisfy players who enjoy both replayability and unique gameplay mechanics. If you enjoy Doom Eternal's fast-paced shooting mixed with the roguelike elements to that of Hades, Deadlink is a wonderful blend of exactly that. Traversing between themed levels and making game-changing choices along the way has never felt better. The developers over at Grubby Entertainment have had their eyes set on creating a unique experience that doesn't require hours of attention. In fact, within two hours of playing, I had already completed my first run, and I had spent the following attempts focusing on earning rewards back at the hub. See, I tend to enjoy games that can be picked up almost effortlessly, and they don't really require a huge learning curve to enjoy. To better explain what I mean, let me walk you through what you can expect from a run within Deadlink. So starting off, you'll take control of a starter combat shell. Keep in mind that this game is focused on progression after death, meaning dying allows you to expand your arsenal. That means new combat shells, upgrades to your implants, and overall quality of life improvements with each new run. After you choose your shell, your run will begin in the slums of Tora. Here we will fight lowly criminal gangsters and a mixture of high-tech robotics that will use a wide variety of firepower to keep you on your toes. After each room is cleared of enemies, you will be presented with an option to choose your path. Some doors will give you credits, and others will give you a direct upgrade to your loadout. And this is where the game evolves as you play because no playthrough will be exactly the same. You will always get new choices within each run, and ultimately that makes for an awesome gameplay loop. After clearing the area's levels, a boss stage will be your final stop, and learning how to avoid enemies will be just as helpful as learning how to take them down quickly. See, over the course of passing through each stage, you'll have options to improve your implants and with each action that you do with your shell, it will activate the implant. For instance, the Hunter's Combat Shell has an ability that lets you translocate, and every time I translocate with someone, it'll activate the implant that I have placed within that ability. And I can only use the implant in a slot that I have available for that amount of battery usage. This also decides which ability and implants can be synergized upon activation. Over time though, you'll get quickly used to this. A lot of the time you'll be trying out new options and replacing implants for a better suited spot within your loadout. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. As I mentioned, throughout the stages you'll be clearing the rooms full of a wide variety of enemies. The enemies will start off easy, but throughout your progression they will adapt and become more challenging. And discovering what weapon upgrades work better for each scenario will help a ton in getting you further into your run. Speaking of weapons, you'll have a starter weapon that has unlimited ammo, and a powerful secondary that has limited ammo. Your secondary weapon can only be refilled upon breaking these floating objects around the arena. These are called C-blocks. They can also be implemented to activate an implant that you may have in that slot. This consistently keeps you swapping weapons to better suit what will output the most damage with what challenge lies ahead of you. During your run, you'll have a lot of high-risk, high-reward moments too. One thing I found super interesting in this game is how aggressive you need to be within combat. See, your health will never be replenished within combat. It's only when you get to a shot that you can do so. And with that comes the true healing mechanic. Your shield is the most important thing in your combat shell. With every hit you take, your shield will slowly be chipped away, and the only way to get any of that back is to use one of your three main abilities. All of your abilities mark enemies, and if you successfully execute a marked enemy, it will explode like a piñata giving you a bunch of your shields back. This constant aggression keeps you engaged in the fight and creates a flow state that will have you juggling each ability to maintain your survival. Now, as I said before, the game thrives on you inevitably dying and thus ending your run. But don't worry once you die, the simulation will end bringing you back to the hub where you left off. There, you can talk to your partners in crime and discover upgrades that will change the course of how your future runs will go. 
This opens up a ton of options that will make the rest of your game a lot easier as you keep going and ultimately change the outcome of each playthrough. Something I value a lot in this game is the combat and how effective it becomes in the late game. It always felt fresh each time I loaded into a new run because I would utilize my new upgrades that I had earned back at the hub, making me feel even more deadly as I progressed, creating an awesome gameplay loop that feeds really well into the power trip. Grubby Entertainment has nailed the art style in Dead Link, and it mixes so well with the overall aesthetic introduced to each themed level. And the music hits just as hard as my bullets do. To me, fun always comes first, and honestly, this small indie game was just another breath of fresh air. Indie games at this point are nearing AAA quality, and if I can be completely honest with you all, this is well worth the ticket of entry. Not only am I excited to see what becomes of Dead Link, but I really hope the developers over at Grubby Entertainment expand the resources to innovate other projects going further. Roguelikes have always been a genre I welcome for their ingenuity and variety alone, but tagging replayability along into that keeps me coming back for endless fun. Anyways. I'm going to see how far I can get into this next attempt, but in case you guys all forgot, my name is Zen, thank you for coming by, and I hope to see you again real soon. Have a good one.